would like to know who you are. So that's the season four. Also, these are some prayer requests and all. So I encourage you to fill them out. As you fill them out, uh, you can give them to the ushers in back, or you can place them in the giving boxes uh, back there in the back as well. So I encourage you to use those cards. A couple things for you to know uh, as we begin today. You are able to read, right? Anybody here needs some assistance in that? We've got some people who are tutors. Um, but the reading thing, you know, that's always difficult. You see, what we do is we put information in these in these bulletins, and sometimes people say, well, well, well when did you announce that? Well, it's been in the bulletin, so, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. So I'm going to point out a couple things, all right? Just for information's sake, we've got Sunday Night Special tonight. Tonight is, and you want to know what a Sunday Night Special is? It is all about parties, okay? We're just getting together to have parties. And if you're, if you're wondering all about it, the first column there, or first section of your bulletin on the back, it gives you all the information for that. I encourage you to uh, uh, to, to come. It, it's, it's just a good time, okay? We're going to have cornhole and other games and stuff. But you might not be a you might not be a player. You might be more of a sitter, and that's all right. Sitters are all right. Uh, people sit around talking and all. That's good. It's a gab session. It's always good. I encourage you to come. It's going to be a fun time tonight at 6 o'clock, and the information is there. The address is there as well. There are maps in back if you need, need that or there's that. Or you can just put it in your phone and you can find the location. Uh, Dorothea told me she's going to put balloons on her mailbox, okay? So it's not a garage sale for those of you who go to the it, it is. It is our Sunday night special, and that's at six o'clock tonight. I encourage you to come and uh, be a part of that. Uh, bring a side dish or dessert and your lawn chairs if you'd like other drinks. That's possible. Uh, you can just bring those. So uh, come, and we're gonna have a have, we're gonna have a good time. Okay, I'll be there. I'll be there in my shorts. It's always a treat. Okay, <laughs> it, it increases the ability to diet <laughs> when you see me in shorts. But hey. Um, and all that. So uh, anyway, small groups will start starting uh, in, in September 12th, the week of September 12th. The sign-up sheet for that is in back as well. Also, the, the fall mystery tour information is back there as well. We've got a bunch of sign-up sheets on the Wilton desk, and so be aware of those and just look at them before you go. Also, I wanted to thank you, uh, thank you all for, if you had a part of yesterday's uh, service for Sally Richardson, um, thank you for coming together. Uh, we were asked to serve, we did, and, uh, and so that's, uh, that was our place yesterday, just to, just to serve in that way, and so I want to thank you for all that you did for that and uh, being a part of it. It's always good to have a, to have a church that when you, when you call and say, hey, can you help, they always say yes, and I appreciate that, so thank you for, for being a part of that, right? Thank you a lot. As a pastor, it's an awesome well, it's good to be in church today. It's good to be in worship. We're going to have us a good time as we celebrate our Lord. All right. Let's, uh, let's sing. One other thing before we sing. Oh, yeah. You do have an announcement. I do have an announcement. Do your announcement. Okay. We are going to be ordering shirts, and this is what they're going to look like, as close to this as possible. Um, if you would like to order them, what we're hoping for is to, anytime we have an event as a church, like we have the golf thing coming up, that fundraiser. We're hoping that as many people as possible can be wearing the shirts to represent us and get our name out there into the community so that we can bring more people into the church and just spread the word about Jesus and God and our awesome um, family that we have here. So they're going to be $10 for anything up to an extra large and then double X. Triple X, any X you add, adds a dollar, just so you know. Um, I will have order forms available at the Welcome Center next week, but I just wanted to have that out there for you so that you have in mind. Bring your money, checkbook, whatever you want next week, um, and then you can order shirts if you would like. So, Can you tell them what color that really is? Oh, that's blue, like a royal blue. Our projectors are, you know, aged. But that's supposed to be a royal blue. Okay. If you have any questions about them, please see me. Let's stand as we sing.
want to remind you that we have a partnership with Hill Elementary School. It's a, it's a school right down here on, on the Davidson, uh, Davidson Road. And uh, which way is it? Is it that way? You know what I'm talking about. See, see it's reversed on camera. <laughs> Whichever way it is, I don't care. It's Hill Elementary, okay? That's our partnership school. We are. We decided that we would like to partner with with a, with a school. It was close. It was. A, it's a small school. It, it's um, you know, it, it's a school that needs help. So we partner with them. And I just want you to know, Connie, come on up here if you would. Um, we're. Uh, she's got a report for you this morning. I want to make sure that, that we, we're putting this in front of you, so you don't forget. We're partnering with this school, and as we do so, we want to let you know what's happening maybe behind the scenes and all. So, uh, so Connie's got a report for you about some things. Then we're going to have a prayer for them because school year has started, and uh, I think it would be appropriate for us to uh, uh, to support them not only with their physical needs but also for their spiritual needs as well as they come together to educate those kids. So we'll have a prayer momentarily. Connie's got the word for you right now, though. Go ahead. And I do. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Have, here's the update. And it is so wonderful how God is moving with this partnership. In the last week and a half, there were two specific needs. One came from staff in uh, request one from a family. And we were able to, this past week, able to meet both needs. The family need was needing school clothes for two little girls. The other one was from the teacher staff. And back in April when we started this, we kind of asked for a needs list on a, what do we need now, what do we need need, what would we like to have, and if I could have, you know, being open, wouldn't it be wonderful? Well, we were able to provide an item that was on this, wouldn't it be wonderful if, and you know what that was? A staff picnic table so that staff could go outside on lunch hour. Bless his heart, Jack Kells, when he was made aware of He said, you want me to build it? This yesterday, Jack delivered the picnic table to Hill School. And I got a wonderful email from the principal last night. And I emailed her earlier that, that we gave her, sent her a picture, and here's what you're going to see when you, when Everybody comes into school tomorrow morning. She had the most touching, heartfelt response. She said, as she was reading the email, she was crying. She said, you have no idea what a blessing you are, you being First Baptist Church, it's not me. First Baptist Church is to the teachers and the families. Because I've always encouraged her and said in my communication, we're here for you, we're praying for you. Let us know when there's a need that we can help lighten the load. And the last thing she said, when it comes to prayers, you have no idea how much that means to us. Because I told her that we would be lifting them up in prayer. And she said, please continue praying for us for the families, for the students, for the staff. Because yet again, the starting of this school year, it's still a very struggling situation. So that's what we're here to do today. And she wanted me to, to thank Pastor Mike and First Baptist Church for coming to them and developing this partnership. Because when they have a day that they're struggling, a reminder that we love them, we care for them, and we're praying for them to help get them better. So thank you, church, for coming alongside and supporting this. Love to you. Thank you. Connie, 
whatever else is going in along in our mind other than focusing on you today will just be wiped away. Lord, I ask that you will help us feel your presence this morning. We know that you're always here, but let us truly feel your Holy Spirit in this place. And we ask that our praise to you this morning will be pleasing to your ears. In your name we pray. gifts, my limitations. Yes. Great. Thank you for that. 
I like that. Not, not just thank you for the comment, but thank you for the song. Uh, I like the way they put that together. That was good. Excellent. Well, folks, I'm up here to preach. I don't know if that's my gift either, but I'm up here to preach. I learned last week. I learned last week. I need to turn this phone off. Time out here. Time out here. I'm going to put it on the little moon thing. And uh, so we're, we're out of commission for a little while. Got a phone call last week from my brother Jim back there. Because we're talking about distractions. And it was great timing. It was. It was good. I liked it. This morning I'm continuing. I'm continuing with that, uh, that theme of distractions. Started that series last week. And, uh, and, and, and as I mentioned to you, you know, when you follow God, uh, it's not like you always know the next step. You just know sort of a direction, and you don't know what that's going to mean. And I really don't know what this is going to mean. Last week, when I when I talked to you, I didn't know uh, I didn't know what I was going to say today. I'm just I'm just going with this. But this is what we're doing. Uh, I do know I do have direction that I am supposed to speak to you from the Book of Acts. And, and, and we're looking specifically at the distractions of the new church. That's what we're looking at. We're, we're seeing the, the progress of this new church coming together and all that was going on there. We're paying special attention to their distractions because there were many. Those things that I was mentioning to you last week are the, are the dis that takes them off track. Distract. It's very important for you to understand that, that even though we're following God and doing what he wants, there's always going to be distractions. Always. You see, we talked about the purpose of the church last week, and the purpose of the church obviously even our purpose is to see lives changed. But how easy is it for a church to allow its attention to be diverted? I mean, it's really easy, isn't it? All of a sudden, you know, you're, you're going along and things are humming and, and you, you know, you're, you're, you're clicking and, and then all of a sudden something happens and it's just like, whoop, there it is. Brakes are applied, screech to a halt. The church is... ADD. Attention, deficit, deficit, whatever it is, deficit disorder. ADD. And let me tell you, it's that way because it's made up of people who are attention deficit too. You see, we are a collection of people who are easily distracted. Sometimes, when we read the Bible, we, we forget that, that the people we read about, these biblical characters that, that are in there, you know, we, we need to understand that they are just like, or they were just like you and me. They had their quirks. And I look around this room today and I see some quirks, let me tell you. Not looking at myself, of course, but I'm just looking at you. Quirks. They had their insecurities. Sometimes they were just plain weird. They had to learn to walk by faith and failed at it sometimes. They weren't extraordinary. In fact, they were very common people. They weren't anything special. That's why we get the good, the bad, the ugly in there. You know, one of the great things about the Bible is that everything's not cleaned up, and then we read the story. We read the story with all the stuff going on. Peter was one of those that had a lot going on. He was an ordinary man. 
And from all accounts, we can see that he lived up to ordinary status. He really did put his robe on one sleeve at a time. Peter was a major character in the, in the book of Acts. As a leader of the new church, a lot of responsibility, a lot of pressure was placed on his shoulders all at once. Was he having on-the-job training? Uh, yeah. Yes, he was. Yes. Did he make some missteps along the way? No doubt. He was an ordinary guy. He was just like you and me, except... He was back then and we're here today. Before we read our scripture today, this is what you need to know. Jesus has just been elevated. We're still in the chapter one of the book of Acts. Jesus has just been elevated. You know what that means? He has, he, he arose, he ascended, he's out of there. He's been elevated. He is now in heaven. Judas, the betrayer, has been demoted. Judas demoted himself. The scripture says that he hung himself. The other part of the scripture says that he, he burst open. I don't want to make that too graphic, but some... Some scholars believe that, that Judas was inept in hanging himself, and he hung himself, the rope broke, and he fell and burst open. But whatever the case, Judas is out of there. He's been demoted. And the new church is having its first official business meeting. What is a church without a business meeting? Huh? There it is. The gavel has sounded, and the first edition of Robert's Rules of Orders has been distributed to the group, and here we go, Acts chapter 1, verse 15. Here it is. During this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. Brothers, he said, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared in the ministry with us. Peter continued. This was written in the book of Psalms where it says, Let his home become desolate and no one living in it. It also says, Let someone else take his position. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. From the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us, whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. So they nominated two men. Joseph, called for Sabbath, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they all prayed, O oh Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these two men have you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry. For he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other eleven. In this passage, I... I think we can easily conclude that, that Peter believed, he believed he needed to, to manage certain things in the church. The thought is this, Jesus has organized them in this way. This is the way it should be. And as the new manager of Jerusalem First Church, everything was to be kept that way. Jesus selected 12 disciples. Apparently, 12 is the right number. 
with Judas gone, they are down one. And that needs to be corrected. So, was it any more of an assumption on Peter's part? Or do you think he was led by the Holy Spirit in doing this? Was it just his assumption that this ought to be done? Or was this led by the Holy Spirit? Uh, that's for you to decide. As I studied this passage, there are many questions that came up. I studied the Bible that way. When I read the Bible, I ask questions. It always, and I start writing them down, the questions, and then begin to think through that, you know? That's, that's the process that I go through. That's, that's the way I'm led in that. And the question in verse 20 is this. It, it's verse 20, it says, where Peter says, this was written in the book of Psalms, where it says, let us, or let his home become desolate with no one living in it. It also says, let someone else take his position. My question is simply this. If Peter believed he had received direction from that particular verse and that particular scripture there, why didn't he stop with the first part that says, let his home become desolate? Desolate, with no one living in it. Another way to look at this is, let no one live in it. Just leave it alone. Don't fill that position. But notice, Peter continues by quoting another verse. Let someone else take his position. I want you to understand what is happening here. Because this could easily be overlooked. Peter has taken two verses. One from Psalm 69... And the other from Psalm 109, and has merged them together as one. He's trying to determine what needs to be done, what the next step for the church ought to be. The big question this morning is this Was his conclusion right? Well, that's an odd question. This is, this is walking on the water, Peter, I mean, that we're talking about here. This is the guy that had the boldness to get out of the boat and walk on the water. The one who had been with Jesus for three and a half years. He's the new pastor of First Church. The leader of this congregation, this brand new congregation, what could I possibly mean by, was he right? Of course he's right, right? Yeah. Well, let's just pause for a second and reason this through. Here's a question to consider. Have you ever had an assumption and then prayed through that assumption? The direction of that prayer is, Lord, bless this that I'm about to do. Otherwise, you've got it in your mind, I'm going to do this. And then you pray that God will bless it. You been there? If you don't say yes right now, you're lying in church. Okay, just so you know. All righty. Because we've all been there. Except for me, 
and I am the only perfect one here. Yeah. The fact is, is this is this is us. I mean, we're here, right? We're here. If you've ever prayed a prayer like this, were you sincere? Were you so convinced that this was something that should be done that you didn't even ask if it was right? Of course it's right. Come on. What could have stopped this train of thinking? You know, when the train's on the track and it's going down, or <laughs> what does it take to divert that? The conclusion has been reached, and now I pray about it. That's as simple as that. The reasoning goes something like this. My car is worn out. I mean, I'm putting a lot of money into this car, and my car is worn out. I need a new car. So, should I get a new Chevy Camaro? Or a Ford Mustang? Should I get a new Camaro or a new Ford Mustang? Now, I love the Mustang, but I'm telling you, that Camaro's got the looks. <laughs> huh? And if I go down to the dealership, I may even go for the new vet. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. At my age, you know, I need a red Corvette, don't you think? I need the stereotype there. I mean, really. Does somebody here have a red Corvette? <laughs> How old are you? Uh, yeah, you know, there was a guy, I was, I was over practicing my golf. Lord help that game. Oh, man. I need to pray about that, I think. Should I play or should I give up? Give up. Amen. Um, I was over there practicing my golf at, uh, at, at a golf, golf course, and, and, uh, and here a guy... I didn't realize I was standing next to the guy who had just finished up his, his uh, driving on the range. And, uh, and I, I saw him get in his new red Corvette. And I'm thinking, you dog, you. You know? I mean, really, where is that? But anyway, somebody could afford it. So the question is, I mean, should I get the... The, the, the new Chevy Camaro or the, the new Ford Mustang? Instead of asking with an open heart and mind, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? Well, I, I've already concluded that this car is worn out and I need a new car. And it's got to be one of these two cars. So now that I've figured that out, I turn to God in prayer and say, Lord, I have to do this. Which one should I buy? And I didn't even ask if it should be a used Camaro or a used Mustang. Maybe it should be, but that wasn't in my prayer. And I didn't even ask if I should get a moped or a bike. You see, what I did is I made an assumption. And then I said, Lord bless this. Today, you might be in one of those situations yourself. Your, your have to is very clear. Your have to is very, very clear. I just want you to understand that we can assume that something is a have to when it's really not. It really doesn't take much for the have to to have added pressure. You know that added, that added pressure that, where the have to 
has got to be now. I can assume it has to be right now when the only one pushing the urgency is me. Have you ever jumped the timing gun and regretted doing so? If I only waited, if I'd only waited. Why do we think that everything has to be done yesterday? So the question we ask this morning is this. Is Peter allowing the distraction of losing Judas and being down one apostle to diss him off track? To distract him? rather than calmly letting it be for a little bit so he can get a perspective that is maybe different, rather than focusing on the new church's perspective and purpose, the new church's purpose, having that perspective of seeing lives changed, he instantly went into fix-it mode. But was Peter directed by the Holy Spirit to do the fixing? Or did he just mentally process the have to this way? I got to. I, I have to. I, I got I got Jesus chose 12 disciples. We've always had 12 disciples. We must have 12 disciples now. You know, it's, it's got to be this way. It's, it's the have to. What if Peter had waited? Could the new church fulfill its purpose of baptizing new believers and seeing people come to Jesus Christ and having their lives changed with only 11 apostles? By waiting, could God fill the position in his time, in his way? Was Peter going with his preconceived idea, or was he really in step with the Holy Spirit here? In time, there would be another apostle added. Jesus would make sure it happened. You see, they selected on that day Matthias. in time. Another apostle. Another apostle would be added. But before that, you see, the Holy Spirit would need to come at Pentecost. That's coming up. Stephen would be stoned and persecution because of that stoning of Stephen, persecution would scatter the Christians beyond Jerusalem. Out of this, a new apostle would be chosen, but it wouldn't be today. Today, our study comes out of Acts chapter 1. The point on this timeline is AD 31. Soon, Saul, the persecutor of the church, has a miraculous conversion and is called by God to be his new apostle. His story is told in Acts chapter 9. The year would be A.D. 
36. God would have answered their prayer and filled the position in five years. But it isn't what Peter allowed. Look again at the scripture. I want you to see it for what it is. In verse 21. So now we must choose a replacement for Jesus. Now we must. Do you hear the urgency? We've got to. We have to. We must. Verse 23. So they nominated two men. And in verse 24, show us which of these men you have chosen. Wow. There it is. Is that praying with assumption? Is that praying with an assumption or what? Was there no alternative? Was it, just the, was it just the Camaro or the Mustang? Was there no alternative? Why did it have to be either of these two? These two that were with them. These two men. Who said there had to be a selection right now at this very moment? If they would have waited, God was ready to answer their prayer in five years. Was that too long to wait? Not for God, but it was for Peter. Now, I'm not knocking Peter here, because God only knows how many times I've assumed they have to. I mean, really, I, 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 just, I just want you to understand. This is an ordinary guy, Peter. I'm an ordinary guy, too. How many times has the, has the have to, the got to, pushed me into something that I didn't have to? I assume they have to, and I assume that it was right now, because that's all I allowed. Have you been there? Maybe you're there right now. I think it's time that we recognize our temptation. Our temptation to play the role of God in prayer. To assume his will in our prayer. To assume the have to rather than ask, should this be? And should this be now? Possibly today. You are in a situation experiencing the same emotion that Peter had in the scripture today. Is there a voice right now inside you screaming out, you've got to. Have you taken the time to listen to the tonal qualities of that voice? Does the voice sound distinctly familiar? Is that your voice. Who says you've got to? What is pushing you to the have to right now? I bring this to your attention. Because this is the challenge. When we go before the Lord in prayer, and we've already assumed the right outcome, it taints our prayer to the point of really narrowing it down for ourselves and playing God. ask you today is there something going
going on right now with you? That you have narrowed it down so much and then told God to bless it? That you just might regret it. The outcome. I'm not saying here today that these guys were messed up because they chose Matthias. I think Matthias was a good guy and I think that he probably did all right. I'm just saying that from my study, I, I believe that God had selected an apostle already and it wasn't either of those two. And it's possible today in your own life that when you narrow it down to these, this is the way it's got to be and then pray about it, you have eliminated God and his miracles along the way that he is preparing to do. Today, have you limited it so much that you pushed God out and then you turn around and ask him to bless it? I'll leave that with you. Let's pray. Lord God, we understand that that we are flawed in our thinking many times. Help us, Lord, to not be so distracted with the have-to that we make foolish decisions, push ourselves into places where we do not need to be, places where you did not lead us, and we allow, allow ourselves to go there. I pray today that if there are those who are trying to make decisions, I pray that they would be wise, that they would allow time, and they would allow you to clarify what you desire. And when they hear that voice and know that it's you, that they would have confirmation that you are going to provide things in a totally different way, something that was never imagined, the way you like to do it. Be with us, Lord. Help us to clarify who's speaking and to know your voice and to be able to distinguish it from ours. We give you praise today, God. Thank you for, for your patience.
God of surprises. He doesn't do things the normal way. Yeah, after all, I mean, we got a hater of God. And on his way to Damascus, he's knocking off his horse. Mm -hmm. A hater of God becomes a believer in Christ. And that one apostle, oh my gosh, what a life. What a servant of the Lord. You see, the surprise is, is that the hater becomes the lover and the true apostle. This is the thing. You're, you serve a God of surprises. And if you think he's going to do some ordinary thing with you, forget it. I mean, he's going to take, he's going to take the curveball. I mean, he's going to, he, he's going to surprise you in many ways. So don't just go down the straight path. It's not God's way. He always loves to surprise. Allow for the surprise. And when it comes that way, you'll say, well, I didn't see that one coming. That's your God. That's the way he is. Have a great week, folks.